Hello, welcome cinephiles, pet parents, cricket enthusiasts, and folks who love global geopolitics. This is your plain and simple straight talk on ionisms. We cover all of these conversations which are in the news and see, view them from a everyday layman standpoint and see if that makes any sense at all and try to peel the onion almost like going to the matter of facts rather than any rhetoricals or jingoism or any of those narratives aside what is the net of the story that's the whole essence of ionisms if this is something that you like to listen to you've just tuned into the right show today we are going to touch upon the regional geopolitics and a little bit of entertainment crossing geopolitics because you guessed it yeah we're going to talk about the rhetorics in the recent Hindi films, Fighter and Gadar, which kind of begin to obsess about the villain in Pakistan. Is there more to the story? Is it good? Is it not good? Clearly, both, both these movies have done well. So, as in done well in the Indian context means having done reasonably well at the box office. Gadar has done seriously well. Fighter has just released a couple of days, so there's still time. But cinematically, are there great movies? Geopolitically, do they make a statement? Is India getting too obsessed about Pakistan as a villain? Is it raising their status? Uh, as, as a worthy opponent. Let's explore some of these conversations on this episode of Ionisms. So let's begin with the pop quiz. What's common between the following movies? 1997, Border, Gadarik Katha in 2001, Veer Zara, 2004, Pajrangi Bhaijan, 2015, Phantom, 2015, Razi 2018, Uri, The Surgical Strike 2019, Tiger Zinda Hai 2017, Ekta Tiger 2012, Agent Vinod 2012. Well, no prizes for guessing Pakistan, the villain is the most common trend across these movies. And this is just last, you know, maybe 10, 12 years. If you go back historically, there are probably a little more there. So what's wrong with them? You know, that's how it's a story and story needs to be told. And there is no harm in saying that, yeah, you're not at the best of relationships for the last 75 years. So if earlier, we couldn't even take their name and referred to them as Padosi Mulk, quotes on that, Padosi Mulk, aka neighborhood country. Now, the it's a little more bold and upfront and they're calling it as Pakistan. So because Padosi Mulk is a little more politically correct term and Padasimul could be anybody else as well but clearly it's the elephant in the room so the why pretend and so might as well call it Pakistan but hey I even if these 10 12 movies um have Pakistan as the villain the treatment is slightly different in two movies that that stand out see one is Razi which is based on a true story it's a spy thriller uh, which depicts an Indian woman marrying a Pakistan military officer to spy for India. And uh, the other one is Bhajrangi Bhaijan, where it is a man's journey to reunite a mute Pakistani girl with her family. So it, it is less jingoistic and rhetorical. And so that's why these couple movies stand out. Now the fans will say, Uri, the surgical strike was the mood of the nation. Or Tiger Zinda Hai is a lot to do with the, you know, the star power than anything else. It's like, what's what's wrong with this? If you go back, what's wrong with this? What I mean by that, what's wrong in showing Pakistan as a villain? Wasn't uh, the United States, or in some cases even still, the United States uh, or Hollywood shows the Russian as the proverbial villain? There have been scores and scores and scores of uh, web series, documentaries, movies, which have had the Russian spy, the Russian agent, the, the classical villain there, and uh, vodka and cigar and that kind of stuff. The other thing is, of course, they have everybody in, as the Nazi Germany as the villains from, from 1945. So that is a safe topic in the sense nobody can dispute it, nobody can contest it. And so 
millions and millions of movies get made and uh, on world war 2 and how the from a purely allied perspective very few movies are there which have been from the opposite side and if there are i'm sure there are i get to come across many um uh, but the point being in cinema life imitates art or art imitates life whichever way you want to look at it so that being said so what's wrong with having pakistan as the proverbial winner yeah you know you paint their aircrafts green and they wear coal in their eyes and that's the classical stereotyping of it um and you'd you'd argue that well you stereotype the typical russians as well so why are we now suddenly cribbing about or not cribbing actually but uh, talking about pakistan um, as the villain um, they are there is a lot of evidence of uh, all the wrong doings that they have done and uh, continue to do so there is nothing wrong in being open about it is one school of thought the other school of thought and that's what i was thinking of is how are we giving them more importance than they deserve you know you get what i'm saying are we bringing a uh, a uh, conversation into our dining tables uh which is a very special precious and uh, personal time to discuss these things you might say who discusses pakistan on dining tables no I, I, metaphorically bringing into a mainstream conscious narrative you switch on television debates there is something going on now in pakistan it is understood and expected that they bash india right so 99% of content that goes on in their news or channels or whatever is targeted towards anti india it is so anti india that even if something good happens in india they try to find out that one small missing thing you know, especially if you read dawn the their newspaper online that there are editors which are based in delhi reporting for dawn pakistan which surprises me but nevertheless and they uh, report every small shit that happened in the country ignoring all the good stuff that has happened and say see this has always had to happen there's always this sarcasm undertone and you know that kind of stuff so almost like a propaganda machine in some sense so the point is if we allow that as a freedom of press great big on us magnanimous magnanimous on us uh but in pakistan that's mainstream that that's okay if you talk to the feet on street they will articulate how we should one day they will plant a flag on the red fort and so on so forth right so but the thing is who takes them seriously <laughs> i mean they can shout scream go to the unga and do whole bunch of stuff and be the you know thekedars or the uh, stakeholders of the entire fraternity or umma but is it reciprocated i, I don't know i mean i'm just a regular citizen i have zero idea you know what could be transpiring behind the conferencing big rooms and everything but hey whatever is generally available on public uh, platforms you get a sense that they are obsessed with india every damn thing even if our foreign minister goes somewhere that is a news if they want they use it as election conversations to get votes you see the youtube channel reactions they are peddling try to evoke a reaction by praising india and they get the desired reaction and that gives them trp ratings admitted many of them are uh, watching from india in in the sense um, you know uh, people watch that content from india much more than pakistanis watch their content in pakistan right uh, partly because there isn't much of youtube prevalence usage or internet or i don't know if that's uh, easily accessible but that apart the point is it's a mainstream conversation and consciousness in pakistan but should that be the same case with us in india should we like not talk about china or someone else and you know raise the bar a little bit raise the game a little bit and say hey you can keep 
chatting and you know it's like these kids who come and you, know, you take the kid to the shopping mall and say you're walking by your kid um, kids say, i want this uh, chocolate give it to me give it to me give it to me i was like ah okay 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 no if you don't give it to me you know they throw tantrums they do all that stuff you kind of almost like listen but not listen but like yeah okay whatever so is to therefore <laughs> is it to pakistan's credit that they have elevated from being that pesky child to a grown up lad if not a man which is warranting considerable attention from india so is that a geopolitical success from pakistan's diplomacy so they tried a whole bunch of things now with this peskiness has snowballed into a stage where mainstream india is beginning to talk about them so if you see say a major goravarya uh, on republic or you know those um, his own youtube channels and everything it's almost like if they talk so i will also talk if they say i will i mean somebody has to give back and is there an element of truth in it i guess so there is an element of truth in it because then it's becomes like this one sided narrative which is what they were trying you see the dichotomy here this is what they were trying they were pinching poking scratching pinching poking scratching year after year year after year trying to do evoke some reaction and there was none and they were slowly getting fatigued and tired but it was also causing us harm it also was setting in the message that ah we can do whatever these guys are not going to respond or react i don't know if that's both good and bad like one could be complete ignorance feel but if somebody is not very smart then they will say oh i will how can how dare they not pay attention to me i will now you know make more noise and create some more problems and so on and so forth so the reaction therefore is the stance that probably india has taken after that like hey enough is enough now stop if you don't then you get a tap on the shoulder gently put of course or you get a surgical strike or what have you and that will kind of teach you a lesson to shut up shop and mind your own business but is it really happening basically then diplomatically globally pakistan is pulling you to their table you know you know how what that means right they're saying okay now you come to our end of the territory earlier they were trying to come into our territory practically and metaphorically that um you have to come into my zone of fight and then it's it's an uphill battle where they have to fight on our rules and terms but instead if they rebalanced that and then said okay now india is going to basically walking into our sets of drama so oh you did this now i will that tit for tat argument is what they wanted and that's what we are giving it to them we just give it to you do 10 i will do 20 that's exactly perhaps what they wanted so why do it why get into it in the first place it's a tough geopolitical answer or a question which i don't have it i guess mr uh, for mr jay shankar or the people who know they might have a better answer to this um but clearly my my sense is that uh, we should at least because the soft power of the country should make sure that there isn't more more attention given to them than what they deserve i don't know if they even deserve too much of attention frankly because this country that is india is self sufficient there is enough quote and quote entertainment stories uh, characters everything is available in the country so we don't need an external villain we hack we can create imaginary characters we can do a whole lot of stuff with this so it's almost like let them make movies which are anti india and let their let it go houseful in pakistan that doesn't that should be the case for india you know why should we get thrilled of trying to beat someone who is i don't know one tenth of the economy or, or the 
we forget the size right progress and development there is no compare you are at number 5 touching a 4 trillion dollar economy maybe get to 3 uh, number 3 spot in another few years your sights should be set much higher than trying getting busy trying to beat someone much lower that's that's the narrative and sentiments as a patriot i i feel we are wasting too much energy and so that doesn't mean so let me requalify that that doesn't mean that we are not we don't strength send a strong message for any violations so let that be at a political diplomatic and or a military level so you know but for civilians for regular folk like us from an entertainment standpoint we don't need to make movies like fighter and not not just speaking on fighter so make, i'm just saying giving it as a recent memory recency bias if you will as an example that you don't need to like one can argue that border the 1997 movie was made more from a biopic cult standpoint that you know historical reality and we are showing it but yeah at the time it was still a novelty and then because that became a success gadar went not, you know ratchet up the uh, the thrill and the the rhetorics and the jingoism and and so on and so forth vizara was more of a romantic take on it but behind the backdrop of animosity and everything and all that bhai bajrangi bhai jaan was i think perhaps one of the better stories human to human contact story so that probably was uh, cinematically a better bet uh, phantom i don't know i couldn't see it razi was a well made cinematically a well made movie where again uh, the refreshing take was that uh, even though pakistanis were shown as the adversary there wasn't this uh, retros uh, you know rhetoricals and jingoistic and stereotyping clunky ness that is evident in many other movies it was like yeah uh, they they do their bit we do our bit and stuff like that and so it was a little more balanced and nuanced take thanks to miss uh, gulzar to pull that off uh but the rest i mean uri the surgical strike road on the public sentiment owing to the pulwama attack and and all those things that happened which is very unfortunate but um it's like answering the dormant sentiment that every indian felt on after every let me requalify every patriotic indian felt after hearing about uh, the martyrs of uh, the pulwama attack and such a cowardly act to do right if you want to fight come in the battle let's have a you know head to head uh, attacking someone unawares is hardly a sign of uh, bravado or Uh, anything anyway but that that's them right so what else do you expect so the point is why we wanted to give them uh teach them a lesson which the military did and that's it but from a cinematic standpoint did it need to be shown again my i'm divided because uh, on one hand these kind of movies increase the nationalistic quotient in it I think I'm going to sound a bit cliched here but if done well and properly done and balanced well and objectively shown then it stops being very harsh and uh, tonality wise and, and it, it still delivers the punch but if it becomes cheesy and corny that's when that's what I disagree with right from a storytelling standpoint and so you can argue uri captured the sentiment of the slain martyr slain soldier and and the actor did a phenomenal job in terms of the authenticity of the character so it was a well 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 done movie but uh, if you look at the entertainment part of it right so if you think tiger zindai or ek tha tiger agent we know then and there's some akshay kumar movies as well i, I forget i don't know if pakistan was mentioned or anything in the web series front of course you had uh, the family man and then um, a couple more the indian take on for the uh, the faudia the web series 
uh, Iranian web uh, sorry Israeli web series which um, was remade into the Indian one I forget the Indian name of it uh it was based in kashmir and of course all that so was it done well yeah was it a uh, ode and homage to for the i i don't know so all in all the point is we have consciously subconsciously in the name of entertainment we have brought in mainstream geopolitics mixed it with nationalist nationalism and nationalistic pride and mixed it with all that in the age that we live in modern age of 2024 i guess battles and wars are fought primarily diplomatically you know behind closed doors and so if i had to see a movie i'd love to see some espionage movie like some real i outwitted you mentally you know that kind of stuff would be far more stimulating than you know your shirts torn and you know bulging muscles and going da 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 and to each their own there's an audience which will say wow i love the muscles look at the way uh, you want to talk to my little tommy here that kind of a scar face scar face like um, take and you, you're looking as as a cinephile myself i'm looking for originality i'm looking for action set pieces that are not seen before so something like say rrr the construct of some of those set pieces was phenomenal that you said wow that is done very differently very creatively very you know, there was a lot of imagination and and so on and so forth so even in these things we have seen the slow motion of uh, the missile hitting the car the jeeps tossing over and you know those kind of things and the hero walking when then the explosion behind them and all that very recently on a very separate note i saw uh, mr denzel washington's uh, action movie equalizer part 1 part 2 i mean it's a, as masala entertainer as it gets from hollywood standards right but the way they have done it and if you haven't seen it i'd strongly recommend you see it right the way they have done it is very smart sharp editing not too much rhetorics no peachy peachy thing get on with the action cut in and it's edited so well that nothing seems too much beyond the point and there are some gory violence and all that kind of stuff but they've managed it very the package did really well like john wick tilts a little more towards the stylized action and all that but uh, equalizer gets that balance correct i'm yet to see something like that in the uh, indian film of uh, 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 filmography right in the list of films there are i mean i'm slowly getting or i am already not slowly very tired of this slow motion star power you know that kind of stuff where is the story why aren't you giving me a solid story something very intelligent which is that i know i i know the answer I, again this would sound like a rhetorical question but i know the answer the the answer is we need a return of investment and return of investment cannot be subtle and nuanced it has to be simple and broad but then look what happened to mcu dcu marvel comics and all the avengers and everything what could have what was a very refreshing take on the superhero genre kind of descended into complex convoluted storylines and with high vfx and billions of dollars pumped in but essence and spirit totally missing so i so that that's where the challenge is that i'm yet to see a very balanced action movie which looks very real i mean i think the last would be what gangs of wasepur and had no pakistan there for you know, so for good measure so but it it was a real down to earth action right uh with with such low budget and all that and of course there have been a few in between i forget the names that don't come to my mind right now but somewhere really smart intelligent action global geopolitics uh, you know amir khan tried to do it with what fana which again made the mistake of stepping too much to glamour part of it then realism part of it and then they mixed it with the love story and all and so if you haven't seen it go see it if you're an amir khan fan but i didn't 
think it was one of his better efforts so that's it guys um if you do know of any movies uh, which um, which have a balanced uh, balanced way of presenting then do share in the thoughts uh, in the comment section below and as far as global geopolitics is concerned my hope and praise that we rise above this pettiness of let me show this and this our patriotism is not defined by hating pakistan our patriotism is being proud of being indian and doing something for our country in whatever little capacity we can and it might sound a bit preachy here but if many people don't pay income tax for example can you just be patriotic and start paying income tax now let's start with that it sounds absolutely such an anti climax <laughs> but i sometimes feel that way you know let's fix the corruption let's make sure we hold the government accountable for the broken roads or the you know the garbage that collects in in front of the square or something like that or beautification of the city here we are calling ourselves a 5 or 4 trillion dollar economy and uh, half of the cities perpetually under construction and stuff never gets done and so on and so forth i mean there's so many other angles that we can show our patriotism towards instead of having to worry about uh, showing it in the movies i'm sure there is no dearth of talent or stories or characters or actors that we have which can focus on that kind of thing so and let the geopolitics be handled by experts and mr jay shankar does a splendid job I, i mean that's his core competency so let him do his job and uh, whoever supports him and of course it's not a one man show or one person show there's so many so i feel proud about that i feel very st- good that you know he has one almost diplomatic genius <laughs> where the gentleman goes around and makes their point very succinctly and uh, you know the world and he can do so because the economy or the economics of it backs it like if he were not in that situation no amount of uh, slick conversations would hold true it's we are basically walking the talk so if you can't walk the talk then people don't listen so that that is the more critical part that all of us should focus on and demand better scripts from our uh entertainment providers it's only that we couldn't care less because a large part of the audience is i just want to spend 2 hours or 3 hours in the theater having munching popcorn occasionally tweeting uh, answering whatsapp even taking phone calls and taking pictures and uh, clapping and whistling and hooting if it's like those big slow mo scenes and one guy bashing up 30 people and if that's what entertains me then what is your woke intellectual problem so i don't want to be woke is the counter woke argument that uh, you often get to hear that you woke liberals you don't know uh, you you're so wired and you think everything logically sometimes entertainment has to be just viewed as entertainment that's it and so if pakistan if pakistani general is a villain then that's it that's how it is so i don't i don't mind it i don't have a problem with it so cinematic merit or artistry or raising the bar of artistry is something woke people talk about for us we just go out there to have fun we had fun we saw our country win and that's what matters so who can challenge that right we can challenge that so <laughs> i know so i hope you 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 get the i mean folks who listen to anisms will know that uh, you know we we try to keep it as neutral as possible and i know some people will say oh that's such a centrist approach but it's not centrist being neutral and balanced means that uh, it doesn't mean we are any less patriotic or we love our country any lesser is just that we also have an expectation about how my country is being projected where it is headed how it it is presented how it represents itself and country as if i mean it's it's us we are the country isn't it 
so i i kind of almost become the cultural ambassador when i talk to uh, foreigners or folks outside the country and kind of go on this myth busting spree that you know this is what you thought but this is what it is india is not like slum dog millionaire of course there is the cow on the street and the overhead wires hanging but that's one part of chandni chowk in delhi please show them the rest of delhi or if you're going to show dharavi in mumbai then also then show them the kolaba or the kaf parade or whatever or borsova likewise in any other city right so and i i get sometimes little Uh, i won't say defensive is the right word but i the amount of ignorance people have about the country is so irritating i wish the world knew a little bit more about the real india that it's incredibly difficult to manage govern 1.4 billion people democratically giving everyone the space and of course it's not the perfect democracy there are ups and downs and rights and wrongs and but if you had a smarter way of doing it please tell me clearly it can't be the china way of doing it because they are identical in in uh, population size but the land mass area is uh, uh, much bigger but if there's a smarter way of doing it then hey why don't you come uh, you know join the politics fight an election win the election and uh, change the governance in the event you can't then the guy who's doing it let the guy do his job if something irks you so much go out there and do it simple you can't just say oh i'm paying income tax i'm paying sales tax so that's my job you do yours it doesn't work like that anyways so good debating into uh, some uh, you know the politics of it but long story short if i were to sum this up for you i think entertainment wise we need better creative villains something little more original something that has not been done before even if you have to show a nationalistic movie it need be one sided you know the the greatness of the hero comes uh, is, is in some sense uh, is when uh, there is the villain which seems unbeatable right the will the power of the villain is what makes the hero the champion or he makes the hero great like it wasn't possible it was larger than life and yet i found that's the classical hollywood style of the hero being vulnerable and falling and all in the name of realism whereas our movies sometimes show uber heroism that no matter what the villain he will look little menacing have a red eye or a black jaw or a white uh, this and that and a weird hairdo that doesn't make it the villain uh, look i mean they just focusing on the visual aspects of look making the villain look me- more menacing but there could be more to the story right write the character arc anyways so that's the whole expectation i hope you enjoyed listening to this spontaneous episode which dabbled both on geopolitics and entertainment and a little bit of both together and that's how for the newbies who are tuned into ionisms will realize that this is not the typical uh, podcast where it sticks to one genre in one episode so it's very difficult to classify it under you know personal journals because this can have be under entertainment it can be in news it can be under politics it can be society art and culture i don't know put it wherever so so please do share this with like minded people that's a humble request at least i'm trying to build a tribe of people where we are patient we like a simple conversation and i'd love to hear your thoughts and comments if you're listening to this from any part of the world Do not think that it's a one-sided story. Uh if you have a point of view do leave a message and I will try and address it in subsequent episodes. The best way is to reach me is on X. That's hashtag #ionisms that's a a y a n i s m s or you can send me a voice note attached to this uh, podcast here on Apple. or you can uh, if you're on spotify there is a option to answer a poll and leave a comment as well do find some time to review it on apple podcasts it helps a lot till we meet the next time stay well stay safe and have a great week ahead this is your host ian and you are tuned into ionisms